the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady of Revelation, Saint Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue to see during this octave of Easter the works of the apostles and the early church imitating Christ himself in their preaching and in their working miracles with this man who was lame since birth being miraculously, this crippled man was miraculously cured by Peter and John just by them invoking the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus that he would be, the name of the, in the, in the, in the power of Christ, that he was raised up from his, his, uh, his crippled uh, nature. Now, if he was crippled from this time of his birth, his, it must have been an amazing sight because his legs would have been so atrophied and all of a sudden now they are strengthened that he can walk and jump and uh, the people truly were amazed and saint peter uses this then now as an opportunity just as our lord did when he worked miracles now that he has their attention he gives them the message of salvation he gives them the 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 preaching of the gospel that they must be baptized and receive christ's forgiveness and his the grace that he wants for them but he shows them how all this was a fulfillment of all the prophecies of old that they were to be the beneficiaries of but for the most part they had ignored it or lost their belief in it so peter is reminding them of all this just as our lord reminded his apostles in the gospel today says that he opened their mind finally. He finally gave them the grace. When he spoke about these things before, during his public ministry, it seemed that it just kind of went in one ear and out the other. It just did not, they could not grasp. Finally, our Lord gave them the grace to be able to, to believe. And of course, that is what faith is, is a grace. It's a light given by God. And so... All of us who have been the recipients of the grace of baptism, we don't realize how the Holy Spirit in very subtle ways has been working in our lives, and especially as infants and as little children, it's so important that baptism be given and not as some f foolish parents think, oh, I'll wait till my child's old enough and make the decision themselves. No, you've already lost so many so much time that the Holy Spirit can be working in that soul in very unseen ways, but very real, that we, we cannot discount the, the, the effects of the Holy Spirit and the sanctifying grace that comes into a soul at the moment of baptism, and that he is teaching many things that... Um, we only come later on to realize those lights that we were given to believe are so important. And that um, our, that's why when they finally said to him, when we heard earlier in the week, well, what must we do, Peter? He said, all of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus. Now, when he says name, some Protestants take that mean, oh, it means that you baptize me in the name of Jesus. No, the name means in the authority of Jesus in the authority of Jesus who said, baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's always been understood from the very beginning of the early church, the Trinitarian formula for the baptismal uh, rite. And so our Lord here in his appearance, you know, our Lord was not bashful or hesitant to make known his resurrection to his apostles. He very quickly upon 
you know, that third day rose from the dead and started already manifesting himself to his apostles. Whether on the road to Emmaus, Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, but here he comes in person, appears out of, you might say, out of thin air. He, he goes right through those closed doors and the walls and, and appears in their midst and he scares them. And he, uh, and he to show that it's a physical resurrection and not just a phantasm or a mirage or that as some falsely were teaching in the 19, uh, the modernists, oh, he just rose in the hearts of the faithful, you know, this nice idea that came into their minds. No, they experienced him risen bodily, physically, and he shows them, you know, different ways. Do you see how I have flesh and blood and my hands and my feet? See the wounds? He still has those wounds in his hands and feet and in his side, but now they're gloriously there to manifest his great love. But then he eats a piece of fish in front of them to show them that he is truly risen bodily and in the flesh. Let us today, as we continue to celebrate this great mystery of our Lord's resurrection from the dead, that we too are going to share in that grace when our Lord comes again, that we'll be reunited to our bodies and souls and share in that glorified state that our Lord uh, manifests and has. Uh, he had it throughout his whole public life, but he kept it hidden. But he manifests it now for all to see uh, and for all eternity uh, now after he rose from the dead. We must pray in a special way that the church will continue to preach the good news, the message of salvation in season and out of season. It is necessary for those who have who come to believe that they must receive the grace of baptism, that it is that is the ordinary means that our Lord wishes to establish to save souls, that they be incorporated into the mystical body of Christ, his church. We're not interested in promoting Abrahamic religions. We're only interested in promoting the true religion, the religion of founded by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the only one that is salvific. And let us pray in a special way that the church will renew its missionary efforts and truly its missionaries and preachers and evangelists will preach the message in season and out of season clearly to a world as much in need of salvation this day as it was on the first day that our Lord rose from the dead. That we need to, to once again be reminded that that's why we're the Catholic Church. It's universal. It's meant for all men and women and children that all are called to become Catholic, members of his mystical body, the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.